So any questions on this so far for you from your side? And uh, you will see that most of the stuff there as submission, we will try to do as much as possible in the class itself. We will get started. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So my suggestion is you can actually just, um, is the same thing to be submitted, right. except that you will add more details. When you present, you, you will not present lot of details. Okay, so it's a whole group for the submit, like let's say report or yes. one report. One, one, the entire group submits one report and one presentation. Right. Yeah, except that uh, probably we'll have, let's say if you have four or five people, then we'll say everybody does some presentation, yeah? But what we'll try to do is we'll try to start presentations also quite early on, just as a practice, okay? That may be good so that, you know, it's no, no big surprise when you make a final presentation, okay? Um, Okay, I've got a couple of, uh, you know, we did, we looked at last time um, this technology life cycle, you know, different uh, innovators, early adopters, early majority. So I've, I've got two technologies on which I want to ask this question. One is green cement. Well, is there anybody here from civil or related thing? Nobody, okay. So green cement is a low carbon cement, cement which is, doesn't use, uh, um, you know, it uses more recycled stuff. Okay, it reduces the amount of carbon dioxide emitted in the process of manufacturing cement. What do you think, where do you think green cement lies in, in this um, four, five stages, right? Innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority. Where do, where do you think it might be? Yeah, just a guess. Is it more like, do you think it's more like innovators, more like majority? Could you, any data point on which you are giving? You haven't heard much about it, okay. So you feel it's innovators, okay, that's a, anybody else? How about hybrid neural networks, which means neural networks where part of it is bio, organic, and part of it is artificial. Where do you think it lies, innovators or fiction? or early adopters, let's go beyond, innovators would be fiction, okay, science fiction types. Where do you think that lies as a technology? Any guess? Part of it is organic brain, part of it is artificial. Any idea? Innovators, any data point? Just guess, just guess. Okay, it's a good guess, but you are, you think it's not just fiction, it means somebody is doing it. Somebody must have experimented, okay. So uh, first of all, hybrid neural networks are in innovators. So this particular experiment shows that it's called a dish brain, okay. So brain in petri dish is playing Pong better than artificial neural networks. That was demonstrated using a company called Cortical Labs, headquartered in Manchester last year, okay. Uh, it's there on YouTube. I, I think there may be a link I have given. Check it out, okay. So the, the what is there in Petri dish is uh, the organic brain grown, okay. And it's along with artificial neural network is playing Pong. Now green cement is a trickier thing because there is no clearly defined uh, technology as to what is green cement. Um, so I actually last couple of days I was in Jaipur along with the senior management uh, people of JK group, one of them is JK cement. So if I open their annual report, JK cement will say 62% of our cement is green. But if I read that, they don't qualify what that green means, okay. So, but another article I just looked up and last year it says that in India hardly people have adopted, uh, so they have specifically used a technology name called LC3 which is limestone calcined clay. 
which is not been adopted, right? So it's a it's a vague term, not very clearly technologically defined, or wherever it's defined, that's not been greatly adopted yet. Yeah. So uh, so you need to be careful when you see where that technology lies. Sometimes people may be just uh, sort of doing uh, what do we call it? brainwashing type of thing. They may be using language to say, oh, it's greatly adopted, but actually it may not be. Yeah, you have to be just careful. Any question before we go to the next one? Okay, um, sorry. Um, we also looked at these two loops of innovation, and we we applied it to uh, Dunzo example, right? Um, I have a question on this. So the first loop was idea to demo. And Dunzo, you know, for him, he just used WhatsApp. So idea to demo was like no big deal. There was no major technology to be developed. Just one WhatsApp group per customer, and that's it. And uh, demo to cash loop was also very simple. It started on day one. You deliver, and you get whatever 20 bucks, and that's what your demo to cash. But of course, to reach profitability is still a struggle. Dunzo is still at 400 crores loss. Uh, at a 50 crore revenue, and it they took and Kabir Biswas took quite some time to get first investor, like 85 rejections before getting the first investor. My question is, but it can be different in different places. Sometimes you'll remain in idea to demo loop for some time, uh, technology refinement, and then demo somebody, and, and then <laughs> can we start in the second loop? Do you think it's possible to start in the second loop itself? What could be a scenario where you could start in the second loop, demo to cash? Is it possible? I'm just asking. No technology development, nothing directly demo to cash. Is it possible? Give some example, give some even hypothetical stuff. What do you think it might be if it is? Any possibility? Demo to cash? No? It needs to be idea to demo first. You feel that way? That is idea to demo, right? You're, you're creating proof of concept. Right, right? I mean, you're, you're building the proof of concept. They can take an existing product and show, look, I'm going to make something like this. Yeah, that's possible. In fact, uh, so the dating app is Tinder, and there's another one called Bumble, right? So the, the lady who started Bumble was in Tinder first, and she was like a vice president or senior vice president of marketing. And my guess, so she's been there for a long time. She's done all that, and she comes out. And says, okay, we're going to do almost like this, except that only a, a lady can start the dating request, right? So just slight change in the protocol, it's possible. It means you're not yet. People can trust this person can get few people. In fact, she the first few developers the, she got were from Tinder itself, right? Uh, which all resulted later into IP, um, you know, litigation between Tinder and and Bumble. That's fine. That's later. But to to raise this thing, what was showed was okay. We want to make something like this. We know how to make this, uh, but with a twist. This is a twist in the story. We know. Will you fund us? And somebody actually funded her like that. In fact, Roadster example, if you remember, uh, we recalled, is what Elon Musk tried. Roadster was this uh, um, electric vehicle, which was one Los Angeles-based uh, hobby club was making. And they first tried to raise money just by showing, oh, we want to make something like that. Okay, they have not done anything. But of course, those guys had been working on batteries, so they were battery experts, right? Especially those Eberhardt and other guys. Look, this is what we want to make, right? So that's kind of uh, your demo. You have not done that. Um, of course, that didn't work there. Um, Elon Musk himself put in money um, in that round. Uh, so no investors bought into saying, oh, we'll make something like this. Other possibilities, let's say a medical device comes, new, 
okay some um, brand new you know newly some innovation and you want to make medical devices but you don't know how for some time you become the dealer the dealer in india which means your official dealer you saying okay let, next few years i'll just learn learn the trick of the trade what happens who are these who which hospitals are interested okay you, you're not uh, you're not doing anything development yet it's possible right and then you say at some point okay you leave i think micromax guys before starting uh, they were dealers i mean i don't know whether they were, they were dealer in, in general it infrastructure so phone was not necessarily the only thing but they were dealers right so you're just learning okay what happens who gets what discount you know i had some but okay of course micromax never got into the r&d development much they just went to china and taiwan and said okay you know pick up the design and put a chapa here and and manufacture of course manufacturing is a big deal but not the r&d part yeah so it's possible that you could uh, it's not very common but yes possible yes okay okay let me give you one example as to to say okay how is technology life cycle related to profitability right um you know does high technology adoption imply good profitability let's say let's say machine learning let's say it has lot of lot of adoption and you decide to get into this with some you know company that you want to start does this mean that it's likely to have good profits okay um and what i'm saying is is this is a good example where smartphone adoption after 2007 to 18 was like zoom right like went really really high okay after 2007 uh, but if you look at the dominant players in 2007 were nokia and blackberry in terms of market share and they are the ones who if at all they exist they exist in a very very you know different form than what they were right so while technology can get adopted and you may not still make profits it's not that nokia or blackberry stopped uh, filing patents they filed tons of patents despite that um it, they were not really and you might ask what by the so okay let me ask what do you think what could have happened in 2007 that might have sort of affected and okay iphone got released and and what happened because of iphone got released something changed what changed no okay what changed the way you look at phones i mean okay one is of course you can you need touch pad and all that's fine somebody can copy that okay in fact nokia phone here is is touch pad right there's something else which changed when iphone got launched the game got changed in some ways if we can say that way just like when ipl came the game got changed right in what way does the did the game change when um no iphone was launched any any guess no uh, the game became ecosystem game that is you have an operating system on which others will develop lot of applications right of course nokia had tried it earlier see with symbian but with a lot of closed ecosystem with apple suddenly third party apps android and of course later android came so that became a completely different game itself right it's not just the phone launch it's the platform that you launch and you get all these guys to develop you know from all over the world that changed right and and suddenly you may find your and how many operating systems can be there which are leading to maybe right so there is no place for any third one so you know it, they were really lost out another thing is cloud adoption okay again if you look at 2010 last decade right really really went up but there are some companies like cloudera and horton works they didn't make any profit why because they bet on on premise cloud their assumption was something like bank they will not go to uh, AWS or Google Cloud because they are too the data is too close to them uh, for security reasons. 
So these guys said, look, let's do on-premise cloud. It means we'll build cloud on-premise, we'll manage it for you and all that. But people started moving to AWS kind of cloud, no matter what. And, and so they, so what I'm saying is the technology adoption can happen. And still you, you might have been betting on certain things which may not pick up, right? So game gets d refined, ecosystem play for phones, on-premises versus public cloud, right? Uh, technology gets subdivided like AC versus DC. Edison lost there. He bet on DC. When electricity got adopted, DC didn't get as much adoption as AC, AC currents, right? Um, and your core strength and agility matters, right? Micromax, again, was not into R&D and um, it couldn't really catch up when those guys who, from whom they were buying also entered India, right? They didn't have any R&D centers. So they couldn't really match up, yeah? Any questions? Any, ask some questions, yeah, come on. Um, anything before we move forward, anything you want to ask? What did Micromax do? So Micromax, okay, so some of you might know better than me. So for 2018-19-20 period, right, it looked like they are just closed, okay. They were perhaps not closed, but very, very low key. Then after this make in India and China, you know, versus thing, they, they tried to come back, I feel. I, in, do, do any of you have Micromax phone now? Nobody, right? So it doesn't look like it has worked. Is that correct? My, I have that understanding. I, yeah, it has not worked. So, yeah, I mean, it's, so it, I just check the profitability is like not at, it, it, making a lot of losses right now. That's the publicly available information. It's not a, a publicly listed company, so you don't have too much of information. But at least from what I know is they're doing quite badly right now. Not easy. The game is also actually quite cutthroat in terms of competition, yeah. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, even Samsung kind of players also, the phone uh, sales are going down. It's no longer uh, going up like last decade. So, yeah. Okay, so um, I want to give one example of these two loops of innovation from my side. And then we'll do one where I have this two pager on Atomberg, which came out of IIT Bombay. And then we'll build a two, two loops from your side. Just see how it happens. Um, so I've got this from this book called Giants of Enterprise, a very good book actually, very nice. If you li if you like to read a uh, bit of details as to how that happens from innovators' perspective, it's a good book, thick book actually. So one of the questions is, what was the source of curiosity for for this? By the way, how many of you have heard of Kodak? Kodak, you're familiar, most of you. Kodak, I mean, not so. Kodak was once upon a time like a, the, the, the brand for cameras and, and developing roles when there were films. Of course, there may be some still now, but, but the interesting thing is this story is as old as like 1877, okay? So it's like 130, 40 years old, 30 years old. So George Eastman buys a camera for $50 and $5 for lessons. Looks small, but we'll soon know his salary and it was a substantial amount um, that he had to pay, right? So you had to take lessons heavy camera and a tripod and what you see in the picture is how you have to carry along with you for a photographer, almost like a chemistry laboratory, okay, which means uh, nitrate of silver, acetate soda, chloride gold, sodium, and you get the idea, right? You carry the whole paraphernalia as a photographer to take a photo. I mean, you are carrying the dark room with you, right? This is how we started. And then he read in a you know journal that he had subscribed. Like today, you might have subscribed to some YouTube or something. Likewise, he was subscribed to a journal. He said dry plate processes is now there, which means you don't need the liquids anymore, right? Um, and uh, he feels that dry plate is going to change photography, right? So he starts his experiments after he comes home from work. By the way, so this is one recommended way of working on your idea, which is to take up a job, get your salary every month, right? And take a tiny portion of it, not a big, you know, you spend on what you want, you know, but also a little bit of thing, 
you spend some time and, and do your experimentation, right? So that's what he did. Um, and then, you know, I'm just jumping here, bind at 1900, this $49 he paid, Kodak was selling camera for $1 and uh, a film for 15 cents. That's how big a change that came about, right? Uh, but now let's go slow. So how did he find funding, right? Um, so for two years he was moonlighting, come home and do the work, you know, get the salary. Um, then he applied for patent while doing that. Today I'm not sure whether it's easy. I mean, if you're working and you want to file a patent separately, I don't know whether it's easy. Maybe you'll do it on somebody else's behalf, right? But that time he did that. And then he approached first, by the way, so he was, his salary was 1,400 a year, right? And he made $4,000 in two years, just selling these tri plates, right? So quite substantial. Then he requested his boss to join him. Boss refused. But it's not uncommon. SAP Labs, if you have heard, the founder of SAP Lab, Hasso Plattner, was in IBM. And he, whom did he present his idea first to? His boss. They refused. If you look at Zoom, okay, Eric Yuan, where was he working earlier? Cisco, which has this WebEx tool. Whom did he present his idea first? Cisco senior management. They refused. So he moved out. So it's not uncommon that you present your boss. Okay, uh, Jeff Bezos, whom did he talk to first about his idea? His boss. He was working in a bank, I think. Bank, boss said, you're crazy, you know, you're getting such a great salary. North Manhattan and, you know, bank. But anyway, point is, people do discuss with bosses. Bosses many times say, look, this is too risky, so they don't come, which is okay. But they are not necessarily nasty. They may be uh, conservative, but they are not. So then he approached another businessman, his name was Henry, Henry Strong, right? Can you guess Henry, now this is a, this is a good question, okay? Can you guess Henry Strong's, just imagine, right? this is 1880s, cars are not there yet on the road, huh? please. But Henry Strong was a leader in that, in his business, one of the leaders. What could be Henry Strong's business? Can you guess? Some guesses. What, what can you guess will be businesses in the 1880s where there is no electricity yet, there is no car yet? Any guess? Just this is an imagination. Guess Karo. What could be? Come on. Some guess. Guess yaar. Guess karne mein kya hai? What could be Henry Strong's business? Can you guess? Sorry? Weapons. It's a good guess. Weapons have been there, you know, at least, you know, they have been there for some time, you know. Sorry? Clothing is a good guess. All these are very much there, established businesses. Clothing is a possibility. Not there, but they are good guesses. Yes? Transport is a possibility. Very good. Okay, so actually let's stick to this. It was related to transport, let me tell you. Now can you guess? Huh? Railway, okay, railway is, is a possibility. Railway came about in 1850s, you know that, in India also, right? Huh? Cargoes, good, none of these, any other guess? Let's say consumer, consumer transport. Horse riding, his business was horse whips. He was a market leader, one of the market leaders in the business of horse whips, okay? And he had tons of money and he didn't know what to do. So he saw this young guy, he had no clue about dry plate technology, but this guy is making money, working day and night, okay? And he had tons of money, he put some money. That's how generally investments happen, right? So um, he, he, another eight years, he did not even take camera in his hand. He, I just trust you, do what you want. So, um, okay, but what was the initial uh, strategy for uh, George Eastman? Films, filmmaking process and role holder, three things, right? Um, have you heard of cartel? Yeah? Which means if, let's say Indigo, Vistara and, you know, three, they just decide to, you know, do pricing together. 
okay every day together we'll have a morning call that's how cartel works right they'll they'll jam the pricing so that's what he did first and then but pro photography was still a professional kind of thing only only somebody with a professional guy was so 1883 had a detective camera was patented okay now what are any major failures yes large number of colleagues collapsed on the strain patent wars were so patent wars start happening you have file patent i will war so a lot of time is spent in the court filing patent cases yeah um, so so he decided there is something needs to be done here this patent business has limitations it means if i file patent you will file something else we'll keep fighting takes too much of energy too much of money what do you think he could have done you realize this going to court is too many too much time takes too too much energy to just keep fighting your patents huh fair enough but after that what i mean if you want to still keep doing the business what is the alternative that you want to have i mean it's not as though you stop filing patents but you realize patents alone is not um, is not helping any guess what something that now of course is yes trade secrets yes there is a trade secret possibility uh, what else what else so what he did was he created brand okay so brands were just i think it's a decade when brands started coming out like pepsi came out around that time i think 1880s okay ivory soap you family I, ivory soap i think was introduced as a brand so people started having brands so he said okay let's create a brand okay because if people can get hooked to a brand then maybe they'll you know then you have less pressure on patenting so he asked a question which is very interesting okay to make the camera as convenient as a pencil can we make so this is a kind of question when you ask that question itself is uh, i think is important okay um, i interviewed a professor manu prakash he is he is a professor in stanford i interviewed him last year i think or day, year before um, so he I, re I remembered him because he used pencil you know for what he asked similar question to make microscope as convenient as a pencil so he is a inventor of a something called fold scope so he uses origami uh, to create a microscope so you can just put like a pencil here and he distributes them mostly as like a through ngos so i was interviewing him on behalf of an ngo in education called agastya uh, but he used this metaphor you know we'll come to metaphors later but it's a powerful way of asking question okay to make camera as convenient as a pencil um, and that's what he started doing um, and yeah one dollar for camera and 15 cents and how long did the model last the business model 130 years kodak filed for bankruptcy in 2006 and ran beautifully most of the time in 130 years so this is how two loops look like so it's very different from danzo he would have he is a guy who spent a lot of time on idea to demo first he would have perfected this because you start with this laboratory kind of process to which you come to the dry plate process so you would have to do some uh, fine tuning for it to work um, and then you start selling it and eventually you realize patenting is not enough and you have this campaign which is called you press the button we do the rest okay what is rest once you finish the role you sent the initially the camera was to be mailed to rochester you will be developing photos we'll send to you we'll load another role and send the camera back later on it changed that you don't have to do the camera you can take out the role yourself did any of you do that actually taking out the role part no right no okay yeah so that's what uh, that happened before your generation you did that okay so you, you that's what i used to do you take out the role and kodak counters will be there even in, you know here you go and and they'll give you develop photos and you buy another one any questions 
um, let me ask some questions. Okay, let me ask, so one of the things which um, Kodak, uh, Kodak suffered after internet came. Okay, why do you think Kodak might have suffered after internet came? Uh, you do not need films anymore. The core business was in films. Films were not required anymore. Guess who might have invented a digital camera? Kodak. Kodak invented digital camera in 1975. So it is not as though Kodak had not put in efforts in why do you think 75 you invent digital camera and still you are not able to catch on when internet comes when 20 years later? What could be the reason? What could be the reason where? Yes. Okay, similar. That's a good point. Saying, um, but by the way, so internet when it comes, when you see how big it is, you see your downfall first. Year after year, do do do. You're saying your your downfall, right? So in that sense, you it's like seeing your death. It's coming, right? I mean, then why would you not? Why would you not be serious? about your responses to that. Any guesses? I mean, I, I have some uh, information because I, my place where I did PhD Buffalo was very close to Rochester. So there many of you, my friends after graduating, they would join uh, Kodak. So they, some of them told me the stories in, in 90s when this was happening, um, internet was there. Actually. There were lots of proposals within the company uh, for uh, digital uh, printing and digital imaging, but the films business was making 70 percent profit. And they'll ask, okay, this internet business, how much profit will it make? They'll say 30-40 well, percent. 30-40 percent is nothing compared to 70 percent. Okay, so the kind of profit margins that they had these proposals were nowhere close and they said no, you need to match this particular uh, kind of, pro it, I mean that is one of the stories um, and anyway so that, they bought one company which was image uh, uh, hosting company also I think 2003, did not really work. Any other question? So another interesting story is, uh, uh, you have heard of Warren Buffett, right? So Warren Buffett is one of these guys who is, uh, you know, great investor. So he he's been holding these meetings every year um, for a long time now. Okay, uh, where his friends would come and they'll discuss which company is doing good, which stocks to buy, all that. Uh, in 1991, was it 91? Yes, he had just met a young chap, Bill Gates. Okay, now there there's a big age difference. Um, Warren Buffet is 1930 born, Bill Gates maybe 1954 or something, so 24 years younger. So all his friends were, you know, 60s, this guy was a young guy. So he came for the meeting for the first time and he was sitting like some of you backbencher, Bill Gates was sitting on the backbench, okay. And uh, they were they were talking about Kodak, somebody was really, really, Bill Ruan, there was a Sequoia Capital is a, uh, you know, equity investor, he was saying, is one company which is really you can just put money without any, uh, you know, looking at anywhere else is Kodak. So Bill Gates raises his hand and he says Kodak is toast. And they actually get offended. First of all, he is much younger. They have done investing for much longer, <laughs> okay. And he was there for the first time. They had, except Warren, nobody knew. What are you saying? You know, Kodak is. He said, look internet is coming and that is going to make this Kodak's business obsolete. So one of the uh, attendee was owner of NBC uh, te television channel. He says, are you saying, you know, my business will also be like down like Kodak? He says, no, 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 no. Your programs you are currently delivering through analog channel will shift to digital content. 
but your your mode of uh, content delivery will change but your you will not be out of business kodak will be but do you see 1991 is when this was predicted it still took like 16 years for kodak to be bankrupt right so it's it's not as though it happens immediately for something like that yeah any any other question can you predict any company now that is going to be like kodak is toast can you make any prediction with something coming something is toast you have any visibility any guesses i mean we, we are not going to you know we are not holding you responsible for any just making guesses electric car might take over do you know uh, when was the first electric car made it was made before gasoline car electric cars came before gasoline car edison's company was working on electric cars or electric batteries in fact henry ford was working in edison company okay and his boss told him boss you work on anything but it has to be electric and this guy wanted to work on gasoline car <laughs> so he left the company but uh, yeah it's one prediction that uh, electric uh, cars might take over it's one possibility of course all in that sense all major car makers are into electric cars as well so in that sense you can't say one particular company might be toast but you could say that yeah it's possible anything else Uh, okay, the oil companies itself may be a bit toast. Okay, that's a possibility. It's a possibility, unless you know, still aeroplanes are uh, still needing. But yes, you're right. He's saying the the oil companies themselves may be good. So these are the kind of uh, guesses you could make. All right. Um, now let's ask a couple of. So let's do one uh, group exercise. So these are the two questions I want you to discuss with your friends sitting next to you. You may have to shift so that you have somebody to talk to. One is a dry plate moment. Okay, this technology is going to change the world. Okay, what have okay the underlined word is what have you experienced? Okay, which means you need to talk about something which you have experienced. Yeah, so uh, that is closer to dry plate moment. You see, boss, like he experienced this. Carrying the chemical laboratory and then dry plate, boss is going to change, right? So that's one thing you want to discuss with your friends. And second is the brownie insight, the camera he lost, right? One thing that has the potential to reach millions of homes in India, but has not reached yet. Hmm? Why don't you spend some time? Let's list uh, <clears throat> after a few minutes. You tell and I'll, I'll uh, write it down. But talk to each other. Spend. Question is clear, right? One. Um, dry plate moment and uh, one brownie inside Somebody join somebody here back or here. Yeah. You have something? Hold on, just hold on, just we'll come to you. You have something in mind? What is your dry plate? Any, any of you? Yeah. Yeah. Alexa, you have Alexa? So it's like a personalized assistant you're saying, right? So something like Alexa, okay? So this is a good example. Personal assistants 
um, is what she's saying. Alexa is a good example. Just we'll uh, have both, and then I'm going to write others. Okay, I'll come to you. And the next one, Brownie, do you have anything? Not yet. Okay, good. No problem. So you at least have got started. Yes, please. For dry plate. Uh, and in, uh, give us some idea in what sense, meaning, what do you think is really changing there? People don't have to write anything anymore. Yeah, fantastic. And what did you, by the way, what did you try there, which you, you know, which uh, gave you that possi possibility? That it's not, it's not a, uh, it, there's some substance there. Okay. Oh, ChatGPT, fantastic. Okay, so ChatGPT is a dry plate uh, possibility, right? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Huh? Crypto. Uh, okay. So this one or this one? Dry plate. Okay. And how did you? Meaning, what? What did you do that gave you that? Uh, feeling yes okay so it so this is an example which happened in sri lanka right but you were not in sri lanka that time you have bought crypto and and yeah possible Yes, of course, we also saw crypto going through, you know, up and down. Yes. So you feel that, yeah? So he feels this is like a gas pipeline uh, going. Yeah, how many of you have gas pipelines in your houses? Okay, one, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay, that's not bad, yeah. Yeah, so it's possible, right? Yeah, it's a, it's something that can. Metro, no, absolutely correct. No, no, I, what you're saying is true. I mean, this is not a necessarily a representation of, you know, what you're talking about. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. No problem. Yes, anybody else? Yes. Sorry? Online food here or here? It's going towards the own yes. So online uh, food delivery. And you're saying it's slowly moving here as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, what about, so maybe our division is like 60,000. What about, what did you experience yourself? See, like uh, this, she mentioned that you know she wrote a mail to a prof and she used Chat GPT to construct that mail, right? That's an experience, right? Likewise, did you experience AI in a particular way? That would be, that would be uh, image decoration. Okay, so that that's a good point actually. So image, any particular kind of image uh, that you uh, that you tried recognizing. Traffic signals, okay, the way it, okay, that's good. Huh? Solar, okay, that's what you want to give here, okay. So solar has that uh, possibility of reaching millions of homes. Good, yes? Bonnie? 3D printers. Can you give us some idea as to um, what, um, what has given you that kind of uh, feeling? Right. You feel it's easier. Okay. 5G. Okay. Uh, tell us what what about 5G? You feel is. Uh, but you're saying most of them have 4G right now, right? Okay, but it will be upgraded to 5G. You're saying. And what will change because of that? No, in what I'm, I'm just saying, 
what services 5G will bring to people faster, faster okay. So they will have much more, fair enough, uh, maybe it will have, good. You, you have anything else anybody has? Laptop, where do you want to put laptop? Brown, huh? Brownie, brownie, you feel more laptops will reach, reach? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's possible. Huh? It can be dry plate, laptops, see laptop is that way fairly old technology now, right? Yeah, so maybe you are saying, but you need to give some uh, compressed laptop. Huh? Yeah, but laptop is now that way been using for quite some time, right? You could say that it was a dry plate at some point, right? But that is quite a number of years old, yeah. Fast, where do you want to put that? Brownie, okay. So, you want to put fast tag and uh, yeah, it, it can really be part of all the you know roads and tolls and so on, right? Yeah, yes, fast tag is a possibility, yeah, good. So, you, you get the idea, right? So, this is how you you can ask questions of this kind, okay. Sorry, UPI. UPI, where do you want to put that? Brownie, okay, yeah, UPI is a good, yeah, thank you, yeah. Okay, so now let us actually move to uh, this, but you see, okay, I will tell you uh, one of the things which we looked at last class was speech recognition. Now, speech recognition, very, very good demos happened in 1950s, okay. IBM had a demo 1950s, okay, personalized trained speech recognition engine. But from there to anybody's voice getting uh, recognized happened in 2011 or something, for like really, really long time, right. So, sometimes, um, yeah, it, it may give you that feeling, it has the potential, but it can take it can take long time, right. So, uh, even artificial neural networks, uh, people have been working on for uh, for quite some time actually, right. So, even Jeffrey Hinton himself, you know, when he started working, his, you know, his PhD advisor said, told him, like, boss, this is not going to, you know, work, yeah. So, but he said, I want to work, work, okay. So, he did not tell him not to work, he did not encourage, okay. So, and he kept working, but after PhD also he kept working, like that is for de decades, okay. So, that is very, very rare case of you working even when nobody gives a damn. So, very rare case. No, no, I, I, so, he was asked actually this question as to how can you keep, keep, how did you keep working on this for so long? So, he said he went to a Christian school where he was the only communist, he, his father was a communist. So, he was used to being in a place where uh, you feel everybody is obviously wrong, okay. <laughs> so, he's saying, so that, I mean he just gave that as an example, but what I am saying it is not easy to keep working on something when everybody else says, you know, boss you are uh, stupid. <laughs> so, uh, okay, any, any other question? So, he, he was, uh, uh, he came for uh, IADB convocation, right, online, I think, 21. So, it is there on YouTube. And one of the things he mentioned was, like, I appreciate uh, the perseverance because uh, I struggled. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes colleges can be struggle <laughs> because they are so regimented. You have to study these six subjects. <laughs> so, anyway, um, let us do this uh, Attenberg. Okay, so actually before going to Attenberg, let me just show you the assignment, okay. Because we are, we are starting to do the assignment as a practice on with Attenberg and then we will go to your company of your choice, right. Um, so, let me go to assignment, is that okay? Uh, so, what will happen is, I am just trying to see what is there in the assignment. Everybody picks one innovation individually. And what is it, that is that is like the first thing to do that you can do even today. I have not, we have not created the, I will create a 
Google Sheet or something. You you can't pick Apple. You need to create iPhone is okay. Even for iPhone, I would say you say which version of iPhone. Like right? is it the first time iPhone got launched or some iPhone 13 or something. But for iPhone 13, it may be trickier to get data. It's much easier to get data on iPhones first, right? So you can choose a product or service, but not a technology. Like, uh, like crypto is not okay. Uh, but if you have a specific uh, exchange, uh, crypto exchange as a service, that may be okay, right? Uh, blockchain is not okay. So that's the that's first step, step number one. Okay, everybody chooses one product or service. Um, and and writes that in the uh, Google Sheet, which is unique in the class. And you pick something in the last 20 years. Don't go to jet engine somebody at, which is okay. I mean, they're all innovation. But let's pick something in the last few years, yeah. Um, and you can check the Wikipedia page if it has sufficient details. You know, that may be a good criteria, right? So where did the curiosity begin? That's the question number one. Like we saw, the, where did the curiosity begin for this Kodak? Right? He was having this camera and, and he read this dry plate. Okay. By the way, sometimes it may not be clear as to where did the curiosity begin. That's okay. It's okay to guess and say, I'm just guessing. It's okay. Okay. But it will be good to, but if you have some information, then I want you to say, look, this is where I got it. Right? So uh, if that place is wrong, then this is wrong. Right? That's okay. But you're giving some reference. Right? Um, then what is the core technology involved? So here it changed from whatever this chemistry to the dry plate. That was the core technology, right? Sometimes you may have more than one core technology. Choose one which you feel is the most important. Yeah, that's number two. By the way, I have mentioned that you don't write big paragraphs. So you write like two or three sentences. That's enough. More than not more than two or three lines. Huh? So the idea is not like write big paragraphs. Okay. okay. Then uh, core technology involved. At what stage of technology life cycle was this technology when it was adopted? Right? It could be any of these stages. Could be innovators, early adopters. Yeah. If you're guessing again, say I'm guessing, but give some reason. You know, I feel this is the reason. What were the initial prototypes? Now, in this case, we were not very sure what were the. I mean, he must have made some dry plate stuff. We didn't know exactly. Some of it, it may be clear. What were the initial prototypes? What was the learning from initial experiments? How did the idea va got validated with potential customers? This idea to demo loop itself, but you are saying, okay, are there some customers who like this, right? How did that validation happen? Yeah, uh, some of it may be there, some of it may not be there. How did the idea authors get initial uh, investment, mentoring, and publicity, right? Um, and I'll give you one. This Atomberg will find out that. When did the product reach actual customers, market launch, right? Um, and what through what channel? Was it online? Was it offline? You know, something like that, right? Um, how was the intellectual private property protected? Was there any effort at all to protect something? Yeah? Uh, was there any major failure? These are the questions. Yeah, you have to just answer. So we'll have this two pager on Atomberg. And I've given references where I picked this from. As a group, why don't you try to answer these questions right now? Okay, just as a exercise as to what happens. And I've also given references for, for you to know how, how do you want to reference, right? Now the idea is why didn't you see which of the questions you could, you know, you have, uh, if you were to write this, which of these questions you are able to answer? Okay. Shall we discuss? Yeah, is that okay? Okay, so uh, where do you think uh, this is curiosity begin? Where would you, what was the trigger or anything that you can associate? Yes. Maybe that's one of the pressure, yes. 
Yeah, so the DSP processor prices were falling and making it uh, a low cost uh, software driven um, motor control, right? That was available, that was a trigger. It's, I mean, see, that's the part is not very clear. It's possible that if he has worked with some prof on that, it might have, that information might have been um, come through that or he might have just figured out, yeah. Smart devices might have been available in the market, right? That's possible. Uh, what about the next one? What was the core technology you think? Uh, that's the BLDC motors, okay, fair enough. Where would you put that in terms of uh, life cycle, technology life cycle? Sorry? Okay, what, what is the data point for that? Meaning you, you're familiar with this, uh, you work in this kind of, uh, that's why you're saying, okay, okay. Saying you, it, it by, in 2015 it would have been early majority? Yeah. Early majority, okay. So, uh, I mean you need to at least evaluate uh, that along with uh, the new uh, things that it's coming. You're saying by then it would have gone to early majority, right? Okay, so fair enough, I'm not sure, maybe it, uh, but it's possible if you know it then you know but what i'm saying is if you're not sure about it it's possible you say that you're not sure maybe this is what our guess is that's fine too right so bldc motors per se i feel have been there for much longer but their adoption has not been great right so what he's saying is that's the time it was moving towards early majority right is that would that be correct yeah because uh, brush the motors with brush is what has got laggards, right? I mean, they would be in the, you know, what everything has, right? Um, okay, um, what were the initial um, prototypes and what was the learning, you know? Any, any, any information you, was there? Sorry? Yeah, so he just created, well, okay, so let's guess something. What do you think? might have got refined in those 50 prototypes efficiency. I mean, he was projecting some numbers, right? So much of wattage for my fan versus what? And that's what uh, must be the driving factor that you need to get somewhere which is attractive enough for you to be really a proposition for uh, people to switch, right? Okay, good. But this is a guess. I mean, we're guessing based on this. There's no actual data. Um, okay, how did he validate with potential customers? Do you, do anything is there? Um, well, fair enough, but he says he talked to retailers, he talked to distributors, even before making uh, the prototypes. I think that's the part which is important, right? You are saying, okay, if, we, if we make something like this, would you be interested, right? I think he's trying to uh, talk with certain uh, set of parameters, performance parameters, and talk to retailers, distributors that will that Distributor, okay, will people, do you think your customers might come or buy, right? That is what uh, this part is. Um, and he said that was one of his learnings from the previous failures, that he wanted to fail early, so that if there was no demand, he would rather go to some other idea, right? That's the point of validating early on. Um, okay, when did the idea authors get, let's say first me media publicity, did you find anything? The US story, which year? 2015 itself. Okay, that is also lucky. Right, you started making some prototypes in 2015 and, and you get some publicity in your story, right? Um, initial investment? 2000, was it 2016 or? Okay, so that's fine. You could, but does sign give any seed funding? Oh, they, it does just say that, huh? Okay, I see, interesting. So that's right. No, no, but sign must have helped them get, uh, oh, investor funding, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. That, so that's, that must have been probably, in their first seed funding was from this Aarti group, right? Family uh, seed round of funding, yeah. But sign would have helped them get that, yeah. But that was in 2015 itself, correct. 
right? So 2015 itself they got some seed funding, okay? And what about mentoring? Did you have any? Yeah, so sign was one important kind of mentoring, but there is another important mentoring I feel they got was the ex MD of Crompton Greaves. It is a very, very uh, lucky to have something like that. Somebody who has managed the entire company as a managing director and he tells you some things, right? Do you, you remember what advice that guy gave to focus on online? The two things which happened one was uh, shifting to B2C, which is they are selling to institutes like IIT and you know others. They shifted to selling to consumers, right? And that is a big change, right? You need manufacturing setup and all that. I think he would have helped. And also, uh, the help was about whether to go for online channel distribution or offline, right? They said these offline distributors are really, really captured well by these big, big names. So you focus on where you are really good at right now. Eventually, they would have gone to offline, but I think that was so. Having that mentorship was, was a big, big help, right? Uh, Okay, when did they actual reach customers? They delivered fans to customers. So I think the start first order was 2015 itself, or 16 maybe, early 16 might be. Again, it's a bit. This this guy who they went to Gujarat with. Uh, so this was six, which is yeah. So we don't know for sure, but it's possible that it is around early 2016 or, or late 15. Maybe mostly 16. Huh? 15 itself. So pre-order doesn't mean you have delivered. Okay. Uh, well of course you have pre-orders, which is an important thing. But when were they able to manufacture and deliver? is also interesting uh, thing to look at. It's most likely, you know, it's a guess, but most likely early 2016. Uh, okay, how was the intellectual property protected? Any idea? Any? Sorry? But do you know if for sure they protected? Or it's a guess? It's a guess. Actually, so let's do, let's actually, let's try. This is what I'm suggesting you do. So let's say Atomberg. Technologies patent. So you actually um, what start seeing official journal of patent office in 2017 has uh, um, you know they looks like so this is a official uh, Indian patent office right. So looks like there is they are saying patent application is there. Data filing 2016, right? Um, and they have given what is the thing. So it looks like they at least applied or filed for a patent in uh, 2016 itself, right? Um, and we don't know, of course, when it was granted and so on. So the, I'm just saying this is what you can do. At least just do Google and see. And there's another thing you can do is uh, is uh, Atomberg Technologies. Um, let us say IPR uh, litigation. Did they get into litigation? Okay. And you say September 22, High Court grants interim relief to um, Atomberg because there is a company uh, which is uh, another, um, okay, let us see, um, uh, file against Polycab India Limited. So essentially, they said they made fan exactly like uh, Atomberg. I mean, since I have read the news, but what I'm saying is, you would do this at least to check whether they got into any litigation so far. They did, and it's just six months ago, right? So they and High Court said, look, this fan is almost identical to this, right? Maybe this is not the best uh, news. Uh, something else might. But anyway, so you get the idea. They did have design, so they said 2017 their design was registered for the fan, and this polycabs fan design is very close to this design, right? And that's why they they won that interim relief. Really you get some time before the polycab cannot manufacture the identical fan, right? So that's that's what uh, the thing is. 
uh, what about failures? Did what did you re, you know what did I say about his failures in the process? Yes, so the fifty percent so you refine it. You can call that failure also because you are improving, improving. But his first four four years, you know, it, his ideas didn't work. By the way, so ideas didn't work is a broad statement. He had some customers. IID had given him, uh, you know, as a, as a IID was his customer for one of his earlier uh, services, right? Technology, but it didn't. Maybe it didn't scale. He realized it cannot scale because the idea was parked or jumped or whatever. So there were first four years, a uh, different ideas were worked on, which, which is by the way a typical story. Yeah. So it's rarely that you have one idea, and that idea itself becomes successful. It's uh, rarely that happens. You're, you'll go through this. Oh, this doesn't work. This doesn't work, and go to the next one, right? Um, the challenging part I feel is that he was sitting on big loan for some time. And that is what is a dangerous thing to happen, because that can put you in sort of depression and all that, right? If you're really sitting on big loan, you're not from a wealthy family. See, somebody who has a backing is a different thing, but some people who have big loan can put a lot of psychological pressure. So I, I wouldn't recommend, um, you know, doing. You have equity, that's fine. If it, you know, if it doesn't work, okay, that's what you do, right? Um, anything else? Any anything maybe I didn't uh, ask or you find curious about or on atom world itself. So one of the things is any story. Okay, this is my just broad input. Every story is a biased story. There is no such thing as unbiased story. Okay, so even these stories will carry biases from the journalist who is writing. From uh, if it's a if it's a marketing material, there'll be biases there to project yourself as great, right? Even we are talking about past failures also sometimes could be massaged. We don't know, right? It might happen naturally. So just keep that in mind as well, that every story is a bias story. Uh, don't just blindly believe. If you can validate from multiple sources, sort of independent, difficult to know, then you get little more credibility. Okay, um, that's one one input. So what I'll do is I'll um, we'll create one uh, Google sheet, yeah, and everybody has to uh, identify one innovation like this. We'll answer these questions, please. Okay, thank you, thank you for joining, despite holy and happy holy to all of you, yeah. <laughs>